627 health and 9 resist on an amulet. Hey guys, what is up? Awesome to sauce here. Hope you guys are having a great day and welcome to the first of many, many test realm videos. If you're subscribed, whether you're new or old, you can expect all kinds of updates uh, to the game. I'm going to be covering, I'm going to be covering the gear today. I'm going to be covering the spells very soon. At the time of this video, they're still a little glitchy and they're not exactly doing what they're going to do. So that's coming very, very soon. And we might even do some side quests. Today, I thought we would look over... All of the new level 140 gear in Caramel. So if you guys don't know uh, where to look at this, you can actually look at it yourself. It's in Test Realm in Caramel City. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to compare the crafted gear to my fire. But I think it's a pretty fair assumption that like all the gear is going to be very like a very similar upgrade to what Dragoon gear is. So I'm going to be comparing Dragoon gear, which is pretty much the best 130 gear, to this level 140 gear and seeing what they seem to be changing. So let's start with the goddamn head. So basically there are some trade-offs here. It looks like what they're doing is that they're raising the shadow pip chance and raising the damage a little bit, but it comes at the expense of critical, mainly critical. Yes, a little bit of health, but mainly what you'll notice when you're comparing the Dragoon's fiery hat to the fire hat for level 140s, the big, big trade-off is you're trading off some crit for basically some shadow chance, a little bit of extra damage, a little bit of extra pip chance. So is this viable? 100%. I'm looking at the crafting recipe. I didn't get any uh, caramel chunks, but these pretzel sticks, they're everywhere. You can actually get them on the ground. They're like floor loot. So I don't think the crafting recipe is that hard. I think all of these are very, very doable. Compared to like Dragoon gear, It's I, I think they're much more doable. Again, this is just my first opinion. Again, I don't know how rare these chunks are. I hope they're not super rare. Uh, if they are, I'll take this back completely. I don't know how hard it is to get 20 of these, but seems pretty doable. Now, for the robes, I'm gonna do something just a little different. Dragoon robes have never really been that good for offensive schools, so I thought we would look at the life one and the ice one. I think those are the two that I see a lot of people using. So the life one gives 1600 HP, 13 pip chance, and 18 resist, along with a good bit of outgoing, and again, this characteristic extra shadow pip chance that I think is pretty, you'll see that, throughout all the 140 gear. Now, meanwhile, the ice robe gives 20 resist, but it lowers the outgoing because I guess they're not a healing school. But other than that, these two robes are very, very similar. One thing that I do think is important to note is that they're making life have more HP. There's a reason why I'm comparing these robes. I have a feeling that this is a direction that's going to become a lot more normal. I feel like life just has lost so much of its identity as a healing school, and maybe health is the answer. Instead of instead of ice just having health resist, maybe ice can just be the resist school, and life can be the healing and health school. I think it would make a lot of sense. That's definitely something to note and be aware of. It might make life a lot, lot better at PvP, and it might signal a slight change in school identity. And I'm not just making this up off of the robes. If you look at the life hat, 800 health. Look at the ice hat, 744 health. I'm, I'm pretty excited for that because I honestly think ice is so overpowered in PvP in general. And it makes sense for school, for a school like life, that heals a lot to have a lot of health. I think that just makes a lot of sense to me. Now, the boots are very, very similar to what we're used to with the Dragoon boots. If you, if you compare, for example, the fire one... What you're actually looking at is something that's definitely just not worth it. You're looking at something that lowers your health a decent bit, over 100, and all you get in return for that is a little bit of extra damage and a little bit of extra pip chance, which are basically not that useful. Wands, you guys can look at them very quickly. I, there's nothing to see here, in my opinion. Um, If you compare them to the newest uh, Primeval Horde pack... They're just not as good. Uh, you can tell, right? I mean, it's just literally just not as good. Yes, you get a little bit of extra pip chance. Sure, whatever. But your wand hits are the same school. That's never going to be good for PvP. This is not worth it. I can tell you right now, the wands, they're never going to be worth it. Unless they add a gear set to this that is actually, like... That is that, that is that worth it. I, I really doubt it. Let's just move on. Now, the Athames, they seem to be a direct buff to what we've seen with the Dragoon Athames. So, this would be worth it. When we're comparing the Fire one, you get a little bit more HP. You get two more damage, which is kind of insane. Out of all of these pieces of gear so far, I definitely think the Athame, to me, at, at like, out of all the things we've covered anyways, this seems like the most worth it for someone who's very competitive in PvP and wants to get the best stats. 2% extra damage could literally mean that you win or not, 
And when you compare it back to back, it's almost a direct upgrade. Now, let's talk about the ambulance. This is the- I think this is the most important update gear-wise. It's- this is an insane update. Now, th the Fire Dragoon amulet is notorious for giving the least resist out of everything. So when we're comparing something that's supposed to give the, even the least resist, the upgrade goes from 3% resist to 6% resist. This is the most resist that Fire has ever gotten on an amulet, period, ever. There's no Rasputin amulet that go goes up to this for Fire. There's Amulet of Divine, Morganth amulets. Nothing reaches this level. So this is an insanely awesome upgrade. Now, as much as Fire got a nice upgrade with this, let's look at some of the other... This, this goes crazy. So the Life Amulet gives 627 health and 9 resist on an amulet. Now, Ice is actually very similar. Uh, it gives 9 resist and 92 block, right? But it gives less health. So actually, now, it looks like Life is the one that's getting some of the best crafted gear and some of the best dropped gear. This might be a change that we could get used to. So this is something I think everyone should keep their eyes on. What is Life going to be doing in the meta? It's definitely looking like they're gearing it towards a different direction. I don't think I heard anyone talking about this. This is huge. This is the first time Life has had better crafted gear than Ice. Now, also, let's not forget, instead of a tier jewel and a square slot like the Dragoon Amulets, these give two square slots. So yes, you get a slight health upgrade with some of these, but you won't really notice the health upgrade uh, because you won't have a tier jewel. What you will notice, of course, is maybe some extra flat resist, maybe some extra stun resist with those extra square slots, and obviously the extra actual resist. Now, something that I thought is really, really cool, and this is for the more offensive schools, there's a chance that it's not actually just an update that's completely biased towards life and ice. I don't know if this is intentional or not, but I did get some amulets dropped during my caramel walkthrough. By the way, you can watch that whole stream. I uploaded it yesterday. I'll be adding in timestamps very soon. This amulet gives an extra circle jewel, bro. That's absolutely massive. And the reason I don't think it's a fluke is, one, we got another amulet that gives a circle jewel, and I also just got random, like, like regular like you know level 132 amulets to give a circle jewel this is definitely intentional and it's something that's going to change up pvp for sure i think what the meta will do most probably just given what i've gotten i think schools like fire and storm maybe myth the ones that don't have as much resist from the amulets anyways compared to other schools they might just opt for an extra six percent pierce that extra six percent pierce might be why these nine resist amulets are justified I don't exactly know what the direction of gear is going to be with this extra resist. I think it is good at least. If the 9% resist seems OP to you, which I totally get, it seems kind of OP to me too. There's at least the fact that maybe, you know, there are ways to get more peers to counter it. Now, this doesn't really solve the problem of resist eventually approaching 100 and Pierce not even getting close to that. There are definitely problems with it, but... All I'm saying is fear not, there's some new gear for everybody in this update. As far as the rings and the decks go, um, if we're comparing to like a Dragoon ring, right? I don't even have a Dragoon ring on this wizard, I, I just, I, I only have a Vanguard's balance ring, but let's look at this, right? It gives 9 damage and 100 crit for balance. This gives 11 damage and 105 crit. If you look at the Dragoon ring for balance, it'll be like right around here as well. It's a slight upgrade. Again, unless you're a big PvEer, I don't really see how this is going to mean that much. And as usual, the decks are the most disappointing part of all crafted gear ever. Like, if you compare to Rasputin, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the deck from Rasputin, it's barely any different. And honestly, yes, you get a little bit of extra health, a little bit of extra crit, a little bit of extra block. Yes, there's a little bit of an upgrade. Honestly, the max fire copies goes down. And the sideboard goes down. So, I mean, again, these things don't matter as much for PvE. If you if you really just want the best gear, you can have it, I guess. But for PvP, this is actually a it's, it's a... it's a pretty big limit if you're not used to having six max copies. And you're using the Rasputin deck already. I really wish they'd made crafted decks give Pip Conserve a health to block and crit. I wish they'd added that. I feel like at least that would have made it worth it. Because you're already trading off max copies for fire, regular, and sideboard. I thought that would be a really cool idea. That's just maybe my suggestion, just from seeing it. But other than that, the decks aren't really that... They're not that incredible. Now, I will say this. If some of the gear seems like it's a bit too powerful, there is one thing to remember, and that's the fact that Dragoon gear comes in a gear set. So, for some schools, like Fire, if you only have three pieces of Dragoon gear, and you want to, like, let's say you want to directly upgrade the Athame, that might not be the best idea, because at the end of the day, you might be losing out 
on 7% damage and 140 pip conserve. So there is that. Something that just directly upgrades by a little bit might not be worth it. So what this might mean is that there might be more diverse gear sets and setups for PvP. And the best like strategy for the best stats, it might differ based on what priorities you have. Do you prefer having the damage and the pip conserve? Or do you prefer having more resist from an amulet maybe and giving up that for, for example? So there are questions that are gonna be asked I'm sure between everybody as to like what is their ideal gear set when they're going into pvp or even if they're just trying to make a strategy for pve it makes a more diverse uh you know like it makes for a more diverse group of uh, of pieces of gear to come together to make what is considered the best gear overall i actually really like this update for gear it doesn't change things too much it it actually establishes a new school identity for life and ice and it gives options for offensive schools to go a totally different route and it, get, it lets defensive schools have more resist and maybe go into that route. Again, we'll see how this unfolds. Maybe there's a chance that either the offensive amulets or the defensive amulets might be too powerful. But I'll make videos on that if I ever feel that way or if the community feels that way. Well, you know, we can always talk about these things. Overall, though, it's a very interesting update. It makes, I think it, it, it would make me want to come back and play the game. I love the storyline as well. So, so far, the storyline's lit. The gear's pretty lit. And we'll be talking about some of the side quests and some of the new spells very soon on the Awesome the Sauce channel. So thank you guys for all the love. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something here and there. Let me know what y'all's opinions are on the ambulance. I just want to know in the comments. I feel like that's got to be the big thing here to talk about. As always, drop a like if you enjoyed. Leave a sub if you're new. There's tons of links in the description, including my Twitch, my Twitter, my Discord, my Instagram, and of course my Patreon. And as always, if somebody hasn't told you you're awesome today, they're doing something wrong. So stay awesome. And yeah, y'all.